Hello, Michelle. Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to have you here again and share about your brand new book. You've written three books and to share about your being an expert on Fox 2 News on a weekly basis, which is super amazing. And I want to hear all about your new book and what you're doing. And I know you were just on a cruise. So welcome back. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you again. It's great to be here. You and I always have really good conversations about all these things that we both love to talk about and that we're using in our own lives and to help other people. Exactly. Oh my gosh, so much to talk about. So tell us, you were just on a cruise just now. I remember, did you just get home yesterday? I just got home two days ago. I was, and this was a manifestation because I love traveling and I love cruises and I wanted to go on a cruise where I could both work and play and with people that I wanted to spend time with. And I got invited to work on a cruise. We took a group of 26 people and this cruise is just the first cruise this group is doing. And now we're planning more as we go along of what we're calling spiritual adventures. Wow. So you get to meet people of like mind. There are during sea days elements of teaching and events and then also on port days, you're just, you get your time to explore, you get your time to be on the ship and enjoy that. And it was great because I got to take my husband along and I got to work and I got to play and make new connections and love doing it. So I was saying, this is something I've been wanting for a long time and the opportunity showed up. That's so awesome. That brings me, because you're talking about the the, the cruise, it, it brings, it came to mind. I had a question for you. Um, back when I was in Miami, you were there as well. And the final night of that event, I was washing my hands in the, in the restroom at the Italian restaurant. And I had a download from the divine saying I belonged in Florida. And then I made the big change and you were supportive of that and everything. But you said to me some, you said water is powerful. And I want you to elaborate on that because you were just on a cruise, which you're clearly in the water and all that. Tell me what you meant by water being powerful. Yeah, and we really intertwine that. It turned out that the last night of our cruise was a full moon and we were on the ocean. So we were actually working with the power of the water along with that full moon energy and we led up to it all week. Water is a conductor and water is powerful. The moon pulls on the tides. You're there in Florida now. Our bodies have a large amount of water. So the moon pulls on us, the water affects our body and everything moves through the water. The other thing is if you ever saw any of the studies about Dr. Emoto, he took water and he gave frequencies to the water. He gave positive and negative statements to the water. He put words on the water and played music and the crystals of the water changed based on the frequency. And so they also believe if you take any healing tincture, anything like that, and you put one drop in the water, all of the water becomes that. So there's so many ways to use water in healing and the power. So yeah, even when you're washing your hands and you get this download because you're running that water over you. Yes, energy. So that I have been learning so, so much and energy think is about everything. Yeah. I was going to say one more thing about that. Yeah, think about water because the power of water over time creates canyons the grand canyon it rubs rock away it doesn't come and hammer it off it just keeps moving and moving and if you've ever done white water rafting the rapids will come to a big boulder or rock and they'll keep going around it yeah it's 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 showing like persistence and patience and nature and how you know, being, being persistent and resilient and all that. Yeah. The other thing I'm learning with the energy is, um, 
because I've been loving baths for a long time, but I just learned about flowers and the power of flowers in nature. And I took a flower bath last night where I took the petals. It was, it was so fabulous. It was so fun. I love that. Yeah. yeah the healing power of the baths, flowers, essences, Epsom salt, essential oils. Again, it can really draw things from you and be healing. Yeah, exactly. So tell us about the new book. And I know it's called Loving What's Next. What you want can be yours now. I'm very excited about this book because it is another manifestation. I have three books and those books all came about because I was working with a book coach or I was in a program. And so they published my books. They guided me through the process and published my books. And then the books turned over to me. So they're essentially self-published. And then my third book that I wrote is a compilation, my Soul Teach book of 365 days. So I just took all the things I had been putting out on social media, but I have always had a desire to have a book deal with a New York publisher and have a publisher pick up my book because I knew that that could expand me into new markets in front of new people and the power of what I can't do with a self-published book. They all have their place. And this really came to me as an opportunity this year. So I got the book deal. We got very clear on what the book is and who it's for. And now I'm writing the book. So now I'm sitting down and writing it, but taking all all the work I've done over the past 15 years, it's a lot about manifesting, a lot about what you and I are talking about. And it's specifically geared toward a lot of the women that come to me, mostly women. I do have some men clients, but it's they're in that later chapters of their life, like middle life, anywhere 40 to 80. I have helped 70 and 80 year old women creating new lives or new projects. So this is women who still have a lot of work left in them, but now they realize they don't want to just work for money. They want to do purpose work or women who have heart-based projects they want to get behind. I've always taught that you can create a vision of the life you want to live and then create a business and work that supports and sustains that. This is also about people who want what we call encore careers, where they want a second chapter career. It's also about women who realize they want more money in their lives. They want more for retirement or they realize they can't retire yet but they need to make more money and they want to be fulfilled. It's different stages in your life. I've now gone through empty nest. We just retired my husband. We just became grandparents and I've been doing my purpose work for a long time. And even watching you come more fully into the creative expression of your purpose work, you know what this is like to suddenly go, I don't really want to live in this place anymore. And instead of just going, well, where's somewhere I could live? You picked your dream location and it was 90 days and you had sold your house, moved away from Michigan, moved to your dream location, got the place you wanted. You had a vision of the life. I'm walking my dog by the beach. The weather's warm. I'm helping people with my work. Yeah. And now you're expanding into the next place. Of that. So that's what this is all about. Yeah. And so tell us about, yeah, that sounds amazing. I love what you're doing. I love what the book's about. Um, it's so powerful and so important. It's like, we are here for joy, right? And for me, I have decided I'm 55 now and, and I'm not going to hustle. I'm not going to work you know, these, you know, so I, I, I made that decision and I'm exploring multiple different things, but I'm sticking with a vision now. And the divine is literally bringing me all the things that I need to heal more, to grow more and to become who I'm supposed to become to attract all the things that I desire. And it's just incredible, Michelle, because it's all what you teach. And it's just having the strength and the faith. And because a lot of things are illogical that I'm doing, and I'm just staying present 
being grateful and joyful. So tell us how important is being happy, being joyful? How important is that in manifesting? I love your story. And now that you're sharing it more and more with the world, because it's a really powerful story, what you created, it's also a great example of what we're talking about, because you had already created success. You have 30 years of success and being an entrepreneur and successful business, but you came to a place like I did of like, well, th is this all there is? And people would say, why aren't you happy with your life? You know, you got what you need, a roof over your head, a nice car, money in the bank, but you knew there was more. And so both of us had to go on that journey of what do I really desire? What more? It's that thing about how good are we willing to let it get? And I used to have a coach that would always ask me, why are you stopping? How good are you willing to let it get? And sometimes we're even like, oh, we have so much and other people don't have, and it's getting rid of that. And then you propelled yourself forward. Joy is really the purpose for us being here. People like you and I, we're very driven by, we're helpers and healers. We want to help other people. And we believe that is part of our purpose. And yet our true purpose on earth is to find and be in joy. So anywhere in your life, you're not in joy. And then you've seen it starts coming in with more grace and ease when we get rid of it, it has to be a struggle. It's supposed to be hard. It's hard work. It's hustle and grind. You still work hard, but you're no longer in that hustle and grind mentality where it was almost a badge of honor. Like I worked 20 hours and I didn't sleep and I had to drink a pot of coffee and you're really giving yourself space to grow and be. And then you see the resources come in, but it takes a commitment to working on yourself and standing for yourself. Absolutely. And, and believing in yourself and knowing that it is available to you. And so I have a quick question. Have you looked into, are you familiar with the human design? That's the new astrology uh, and deeper, the, your human design. Have you, do you know what you what you are? I'm smiling big because I love human design and it was really pivotal for me. And I've been applying it to my life and business for about eight years now. I've studied it. It opens what I say a rabbit hole. You know, it's great, but there are thousands of pieces of information. So you start by looking at your chart and understanding some of the basics. And then it's very in-depth. And I have found it to be absolutely accurate yeah. and very helpful. Are you in? In it now human design I, you know, I just found out I mean I, I'm a generator and I'm just exploring and it's showing up it keeps showing up and it's just fun it's a lot of fun and so I thought when you were talking about you know you and I and our purpose and you know all the things that we're supposed to be doing and we're meant to be doing and we're healers and you know um, helpers and healers, it it kind of goes back to what what is my human design? Like, what am I supposed to be doing, right? And that's the thing about the working. It's like, if you're doing what you love, it doesn't even feel like work, right? You're having fun. Or you can do it for 10 hours and not feel drained and tired, right? So what what are, are you a manifester? What are you? Are you manifesting? Yeah, human design is really valuable, like you said, because it helps you see how you're wired and designed. And for me, it validated and confirmed things I was already feeling, including I'm a projector. Oh. And they talk a lot about projectors being in business and being entrepreneurs because generators, and I was trained by a lot of generator coaches, and I would always hit a place of like, why is this not working? I'm coachable. I take risks. I do things. And once I learned the ways I was different as a projector, I've been able to apply that. So it's fascinating to me as a projector to then be an entrepreneur. Projectors are here to support and guide and generators can work and work and work until their energy has gone and projectors energy is in a different way. And you know how human design is also based 
on astrology. So when you start looking at the placements in your human design, and I realized here's what I'm here to do, and here's what it means, the more I've applied it, the more success I've created. So it really is a powerful tool. And once you get into it, like you're finding it's an endless rabbit hole, but it's great. Yeah, because it's it's a lot of unlearning, right? Because we were designed to be this way. And then society and parents and all the things taught you, no, don't do that. And all these things that kind of, you know, so now it's like, oh, great. I was, I was me, I was doing me, but you know, anyway, so it's a lot of unlearning. I was just curious. So you're a projector. That's cool. I'm going to get into it more. I'm going to learn more about myself. It's, it's really powerful information and I'm sharing it. And um, one thing is funny is my son is an Aries and a generator. I am an Aries and a generator. So it'll be interesting. Those commonalities. Get- in fact, I believe in it so much. I have two new grandbabies, one who's two now and one who was just born a few months ago. The minute they're born and I know their birth times, I run their human design charts. And for my own children and my husband and for my clients. So when you first get into it, as you're finding If you just understand your type, which we've just been talking about, and your strategy, which is how you're meant to make decisions, your authority, and your strategy of how you're meant to operate in the world, those three things, they say, will change your life, your type, your strategy, and your authority. And then beyond that, you learn your sun gate and all the different things. Uh, Like you were saying, it will show you where you're open to programming and conditioning and where you're more solid. So it is a great tool. I'm excited you're diving into it and sharing it. Yeah, a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about the Fox 2 News. I was I was watching some of the clips because I'm down here and I don't have cable, but I was watching some of your clips and so good. So good. How is that going? Like, how did you the manifest thing that's that? Still- <laughs> The thing that still lights me up, it was another manifestation that came in last year. Again, some of these have been desires. I want you to understand for a while, but I wasn't ready to be the person to hold them and my infrastructure of my business or me internally. And then they came in like the book deal and the Fox News, but I was prepared and trained for them and they've been desires and then they showed up. The thing that lights me up every week about the Fox News is I am on national TV talking about manifesting and universal law. And that's something that was unheard of. And they talk about me as a spiritual life coach and manifesting expert. And so the way the universe orchestrated it, I got asked to be a guest expert with my former book on the morning news on Fox 2 News out of Detroit, And then they asked me to come back and the woman who is one of the newscasters, she and I really hit it off. She's very interested in these things. She was starting a news show that was a noon show called The Noon. And I just really was feeling the energy of the connection with her. And they invited me to start coming on. Then they gave me my own weekly slot, Wellness Wednesday. And shortly after the show got picked up nationally. So it's taking those opportunities, doing those things, stepping in. I believe when something shows up, even if it's big or scary, or you have to make accommodations to do it, if it's right, it will stretch and grow you, but it's a match to you. And I just stepped right in. It has really benefited me And we get a lot of feedback about how it's changing people. It's something fresh and new on the news and people look forward to applying it to their lives. And I can't believe I'm on national TV talking about it. So yeah, I've been doing that since last year and loving it. And that continues to grow and develop. That's incredible. Yeah, I was watching the clip about finding love and I just loved what you said about deciding what you are not available for and also becoming a match for what you do desire. And then when the person shows up and they're not 
who you desire. That's where you need to heal and grow. Like it just, it's all real. It, it happened to me recently. Like I was with someone and he's not, he's in, and he's displaying the things that he has that I don't like are what I need to still work on for me. And it's just, it's literally that I was talking to a woman at boxing and she's, um, she's a, you know, single dating divorced woman. And I said to her about some, this person and, you know, but there were some other programs going in her mind that I've cleared, but she said, um, I said, once I'm here, I'm going to attract here. Like I just said that. And she goes, oh, is that how it works? And I'm like, yeah, that's how it works. Like I'm confident this is how it works. hundred percent. It does. And I love you're bringing it up because it's all energy. So yeah, I talked specifically about love and then sometimes money. It's all energy. And you're right. When you send out your ask, your order, everything that comes back. So say for love, every way that he was on your list of what you want are things you're already clear in. You can receive and allow that. The things he's showing up that you don't want shows you programs and conditioning that you're available for inside. They're usually very early from our family of origin that you still need to clear because in some way you're a match for them because what we do, anything we didn't clear with the origin, which is usually our parents or whoever raised us, our ancestors, our generations and our siblings and all of those people people early on, we go find other people to hash it out with trying to clear it. And that's the inner work that you're talking about. Um, so tell us, how do we heal? I mean, for the audience, I know hiring a coach, what other ways can people heal those, those things that to elevate their become the, 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 the higher version of themselves? It's a great question because, you know, for eons, as far back as civilization, every community had healers in it. And so people have always recognized the healing. And sometimes it was very physical, sometimes very spiritual, mental, emotional. And there are endless ways to do that. I was a therapist. I was a hospital chaplain before I became a coach. So the basic of all of it is becoming self-aware, like we were talking about in the very beginning, and doing that inner work. And this could be with a spiritual mentor or a coach or a guide or a pastor or an uh, energy healer. I've used hypnotherapist, acupuncture, chiropractor. So that's one piece is all the people that can help you. But it's not so that you have to just keep going back to these people. I now can use them when I need them. But for instance, I had an acupuncturist for a long time and I only went to her a couple times a year because she could clear big things. And she said, it's easier to work on you because you're doing your own work. So this is really about you filling your toolbox with what you will use. One that I have not used a lot, but a lot of people use, and I learned it is EFT, which is tapping. If you've heard about that, there's yeah. breathing. People teach all kinds of breathing and somatic body work. This is about, it can be yoga. It can be Tai Chi, walk meditations. Dr. Joe Dispenza is a favorite of mine because he's in the mainstream teaching people how to meditate to cure their illnesses. And he's yeah. opening and activating people's God part of their brain, the pineal. So it's finding, trying different things. Music is healing. I love going to sound baths and sound healers and all of that. I have tools. One of my main tools I've used always is Ho'oponopono. And if you don't know what it is, one of the most impactful books to my life was Zero Limits by Dr. Joe Vitale. And I have trained and studied Ho'oponopono with him for years. And there's a lot to it, but the basic understanding, it's a simple prayer. And the story behind it is fantastic to read the story about Dr. Hugh Lynn, who was the therapist who brought it to the Western world. But the basic is if something is going on with you and it's bothering me and I'm trying to fix you, which was classic for me, I was codependent, a lot of us that are helpers and healers. 
whatever it is, I come back to what in me is needing you to show up and do this in my life right now. I'm creating this experience with you. And when I clear it in me, it stops happening. It's happened over and over. One of my best stories is early on when I was young out in the working world, I had the same boss five times. It created stress, distress, disease, a mess in my life. And I'd pick up my stuff and I'd say, you're horrible, I'm leaving. And I'd get to the next place and I'd go, it's the same boss. And once I got to the core of it, the core issue that I was playing out, we're only playing out a few core issues throughout our lifetime, that boss stopped showing up. Then it would come in in other places, but by then I could catch it. So in other pieces, in whatever way you use, getting clear on what's triggering you. If you are emotionally negatively charged, it's a trigger in you. So the difference is me saying, I don't like people who lie. I'm not going to have them in my life. Or being triggered and losing control of myself and bringing liars into my life and then saying, you're horrible. You're a liar. Why are you lying to me all the time? Those are two different things when you're neutral and when you're triggered and whenever you're triggered negatively, that's what you need to work on and they'll stop showing up. Mm -hmm. Powerful. That's good stuff. So I recently had someone on my podcast. It'll be out next week. And she is a healer. She was a former nurse, but she kind of conveyed to me that she believes that all disease and illness in the body is manifestation from emotional. And I believe a lot of that to be true, but I did have a question I didn't get to ask about, you know, the environment and different things like that. But you were talking about how this will, dis-ease will show up in the physical body. And I just wanted to touch on that briefly with you as an expert, um, how that happens and what, you know, you were just talking about the healing with your mind and what Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza is doing and all of that. Like, tell us your thoughts on that. I love Dr. Joe Dispenza's work because he is a scientist and he's doing so much science based to prove to the people that need the science. I like when science comes along and proves something I already believe, but his studies are really good for people who want the science. I absolutely believe and have for a long time what that nurse is saying. It is a complex issue because there are physical factors, environmental, and our genes, and our makeup, and all that. But Dr. Joe Dispenza is kind of putting the kibosh on you saying, this is the way I was born, and this is what my family has, and that you can actually change it. People in his world are curing incurable diseases with these processes. So because I was a therapist, but I was aware in my own life and doing my work when I was moving from therapist to energy healer, on that, I do believe that there are spiritual, mental, emotional, and then physical layers and levels. And things start way out here. This is another reason to do your own work. They only make their way into the physical body when they don't get dealt with out there. And then they get stuck. We call it your issues in your tissues. They get in your organs. And I had an undiagnosed illness for seven years that was debilitating. And when I started doing my work in the world and my work on myself, it went away. It created a real health crisis, but then a healing crisis. And now I understand in my body what was affected. And it's amazing. Then when I took it apart of what was going on in my body, it totally correlates. And yeah. so I know once things are happening in my physical body, now I deal with them because they started as spiritual, mental, and emotional. And I actually did an energy healing modality for a while that worked on the things getting stuck in your organs because your feeling guidance system is meant to come through you. Anger, sadness, grief, 
resentment. They're all normal, but we hold on to them and we suppress them and we store them in our body. And then they're eating us alive. They're meant to move through us. And then you're meant to do something about them. That knowing and understanding and working with that tool will change your whole life. Yeah. I have changed my physicality so much from that. And I'm able to heal so many more things. I don't have to be on a lot of medications. I Thanks. deal with the mental and emotional and spiritual when the physical shows up, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's also an energy healer and a psych. Uh, she's a counselor, mental health yeah, she's awesome. Now, one more thing I'll tell you about that is I also am a proponent of going to the doctor. You'll find the full spectrum. So I always go to the doctor. I get everything checked out. I do what I need to do physically, but I also bring that in. So it, it, it's a mix. Yeah, yeah. I believe in doctors. I had a thing, but you do have to be your own advocate. I won't stop saying that because if I were to listen to the doctor's I would, I don't know if I'd even be here because they would, they all told me I had fibromyalgia and I would have been on whatever drugs they tried to give me and who knows, but I knew it wasn't that. And just like my thyroid pill, I just got off. I knew I didn't need it intuitively. I knew I didn't need it. And then I got tested and I didn't need it. And he was like, you could stay on it because you're not going to feel good. And I was like, mm, I don't like that. And I knew, and now I sleep better at night without it. And you approach it like I do. It's not that I'm not going to take the medicine, but now I'm going to go deal with whatever it is because I don't want you to give me a pill. I'm 58 years old and tell me, just take that pill the rest of your life. Oh, now take this one and take this one. And I saw a lot of that. They have so I want to fix it. Yeah, exactly. And what I'm just learning so much is about energy. And it's like, it's, it's just so incredibly powerful that everything is energy and, you know, you know, this cup and everything, it's just, it's just magical actually. And that we can co-create with the universe, anything we desire, which you're going to have in your book. So I'd love to hear one thing I would love to do a couple of questions. One is a friend, my son's friend was asking, um, ask her, how do people get in their own way? And, you know, how, what's the, the way that they get in their own way? Because he's kind of a, he's not saying he's a procrastinator anymore. He used to be a procrastinator anymore. He's very careful what he speaks into the universe. But he was saying, you know, what is like the, the number one reason or how we're getting in our own way. And basically, and then I wanted to also ask your personal like routine, whether it's your morning practice or your own meditation or how, like, I would love to know what you personally do to manifest all those wonderful things besides just living in joy and all the things, but like your practice, your meditation, morning routine, how important is letting go, <laughs> letting go and allowing, like it's, it's so powerful to just surrender to what is and accept what is and let go and then it all like that that clingy needy that trying it just doesn't work it just doesn't work and being detached it's just incredible i've worked on the codependency big time um just finished two Kathy Heller courses and now I'm going to her retreat in Boca. And that was, I know I, I, I know I texted you like a month or whatever ago saying I'm doing something scary and exciting. And then I actually didn't do it, but now I am doing it. So um, oh, good. Uh, yeah, those are all really powerful pieces. And as you found, this is an ongoing journey. So I had what I consider my spiritual awakening early on at 25, because my life was a chaotic mess and stress and dissatisfied. And I started changing. And so these things you learn at first, you're doing them and you're trying and you're seeing what works for you and you're getting results and you're learning more. And eventually they'll become a way of living and being. And so the manifesting has become so much a way of living and being. The powerful piece about getting in your own way, I mean, that's what most people come to coaches and healers for. And that's the biggest work because one, we're programmed and conditioned from a young age and we have beliefs that we don't even realize are not ours. And so our family never, we can't, you don't. Remember when you tried this, remember when other people have done it, that's not for you. 
and you get overwhelmed and you believe those things and those people are well-meaning a lot of time and trying to keep you safe but that doesn't get you the success and the life you want. It's about growth and expansion. So the number one way we get in our own way is we stop ourselves based on things that we believe are true that aren't. And we have to shift our perception and really dig in. Is this true or not? Another one I see all the time. It's the reason I wrote my first book 10 years later than when I got the inspiration and started writing it. Because I had in my mind, once a coach or somebody shows you or you get the awareness, it seems crazy what you're doing to yourself. I didn't start writing the book because I had a belief that when the book was done, it was going to be very expensive to publish it. And I didn't know what to do. So that just kept me stuck in that. And then I just get busy with my life. And then I realized the resources are there. The help is there. And there's no need for those to show up until limited, I have a book. Yeah, limited thinking. Once, once I have the book, so that limited thinking and beliefs, another powerful one is you ever, if you ever come across the concept of family constellations, it's both in therapy and energy work, where we actually, we are programmed that if you leave the tribe, you die. So we are programmed from a very young age. We're absorbing how do I stay alive in this system? And we go out in the world and we think we're breaking away, but we are being loyal to those people in our lives. I had done so much work on issues with my mother. I thought it was done. And just a few years ago, I came across another big piece that I couldn't get at any other way until I did family constellations with someone and I uncovered this was generational back multiple generations when I was playing out with my mother. And then, wow, I was able to see how I was playing it out with one of my daughters in a similar way. And it's based on not just programming and conditioning, but being loyal that we can't make our parents wrong. And so all of these things, they're so unconscious, you've got to start getting conscious about them. So those are ways we get in our way. Fear is a big one. Fear. One of the number one questions I get asked is how do you make the fear go away? And I'm here to tell you now, it won't go away until you do the thing. The way that we are created and wired and designed, it's our brain trying to keep us alive. The fear goes away when you do the thing and your brain and your nervous system and your body realize I didn't die. I'm okay. And people are waiting for the fear to go away. And even they'll come and get energy work done, or can I hold the crystal or can I do this or that? And it doesn't go away. You overcome it. So one of the things I'll tell you about my routines, I am such a non-routine person. When I try to make routines, I can't even stick with them for long, but these are things I have made a part of my life. So people who are good at routines, like I have a friend who she studied a lot of Joe Dispenza stuff. She meditates for over a year now, twice a day, every day doing the Joe Dispenza. She's a routine person. It's working for her. I go to create routines and I don't do them well. Other people that tell me I journal every day. I have for 20 years. Here's all my journals. So I don't do as many of those kind of things, but I've trained myself. First of all, here's an important one. In the morning, when you wake up, before you activate your voice and before your feet hit the ground, you're in a theta brainwave state. You're not yet in beta, which is where a lot of us live, which is fight or flight. And by the way, we were not meant to live in beta brain. Theta is where we get inspiration and where we connect to our higher self and source, however you understand that, creator, God source. So in the morning, I have trained myself. What am I thinking and feeling? People have bad habits. Another day, got to go to the office. Bet the traffic's going to be bad. I'm not going to have time to eat breakfast. My stomach hurts. 
all of these things I have trained those thoughts. I believe now I cannot afford the luxury of a negative thought and they can become habit. You think you don't want negative thoughts, but they're habits and they give you dopamine hits and people get addicted to them in the same way. When you get in bed before you fall asleep, people are going yelled at my kid today. My boss yelled at me. Didn't do that. Didn't eat well. All of those things, I now Shame. say the whole oh, no prayer as I'm going to sleep. Or last night, I was like, I am so grateful for this and this and this. And I'm thanking because then your subconscious brain takes that. And that's what's important. And it focuses the energy there. So this is for me getting rid of negative thoughts everywhere they occur all the time and getting rid of those energies in my body. So it is a total retraining. The other biggest thing, both as I was working on my gifts and my work, and also in manifesting, you have got to learn to get control of your mind. It's meant to be a tool. So I tell people now, and they don't understand what to make of it, I do not allow my mind to make any decisions for me. Uh, You've got to understand your mind. It's a liar. It's a tool. And it's, it's a, a five-year-old. <laughs> it's, it's like letting a five-year-old run your life and your business. My brain gets a lot of jobs to do. My mind does work for me, but it does not make any of my decisions. So those are some of the biggest things I do. And I have had to become impeccable with my energy, with what I'm running. And that lets me just manifest all the time. Yeah. Oh, you're in flow, right? That's flow. Yes. I'll ask my son, how are you? And he'll send me a picture of a water wave and say he's in flow. Like that life's like, everything's good. You know, I'm so proud. I love that. Yeah, yeah, you want to be in flow more than not. I always tell my friends when everything's coming in, I'll say I'm in flow. And I'll also say I'm in the field, which means I'm manifesting in the field using energy. I'm not pounding away matter on matter. Those are two different ways to create and they both work. And you were talking about, I'm no longer about the hustle and the grind. That's just matter on matter, sweat equity. It's so much easier with so much more grace and ease to manifest with energy before it gets to the physical. And that's, I say, I'm riding the wave in the field. I'm in the flow. And if you can learn at first, you're going to fall on and off, just like learning how to surf. You're going to hit your head. You're going to go underwater, but then you will get more and more times where you can stay on the surfboard in the flow for longer and longer until I can be like for weeks, I am in the flow. And then what knocked you off the board again? Yeah. It's practice. It's a practice. Amazing. I love it. So, um, so the, the morning practice is the Honoponopono prayer before you hit, before you get out of the bed. And then at night it's the gratitude, right? It's thank you. I use the Honopono prayer every time a negative thought comes in. I interrupt it. So I do Ho'oponopono a lot as clearing. Also, I collect malas just like a rosary bead. But in the Hindu relation, you can use the beads to do the Ho'opono prayer too. So the main thing is in the morning before your feet hit the floor and you activate your voice and at night, once you're in between awake and asleep, monitoring your thoughts, Ho'opono prayer, grateful, praying, just saying, I'm available for, I'm grateful for, you can script your day. All of those are things that I do and I don't allow negative thoughts because then your subconscious will grab onto those and create them for you. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely programmed to dwell in negativity. We're programmed to focus on the problems, the issues. And it's it's incredible, you know, like you said, the dopamine that comes from from the negative thoughts. We yeah. get addicted to negative thoughts. Sometimes they make us feel powerful, getting angry, resenting, holding on to those things when we fear, feel powerless, but they're taking a toll on our physical body. They're eating away at us and mm -hmm. stress causes dis-ease, which becomes disease. Yes, exactly. So tell everyone what the Honoponopono prayer is. It's something like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. 
You just got it. You can say it. People ask what order. You can say it in any order. You can read if you want the full story and more on it. Zero Limits. And there are a couple of books on Zero Limits is the first one to start with on Ho'oponopono. You can also Google it all over. Uh -huh. The Ho'opono Prayer, which works even if you don't understand everything behind it. That's the next level, just like human design works, even before you understand the whole chart. It's, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. And you're praying, you're talking to your higher self and God, spirit, source, universal energy. And you're saying, I'm sorry I created this, I forgive myself, for having everyone act this out with me. Thank you. And I love you to yourself and source. So in this prayer, then the first thing we want to do, because this is what we want to do with everything, fix everybody else. And that's codependency. You and I have had to learn that. And it doesn't work. It's all inside us. So people are like, I'm going to go ho, pono, pono, my husband and my son. No, you're always saying what in me is creating this and they're showing up and playing it out with me. And when I clear it in me, so even if all of a sudden I am laying there worrying about my daughter or my son and they are struggling and suffering in a way that I can't fix it and I can't control it, I can say what in me is needing them to show up this way and I can clear my part of it. And that's all I can do. And it's really a prayer. It clears. It stops those thoughts and it clears your energy. Oh, so good. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, because we create our realities and everything is feedback. Everything around us that is happening is feedback, right? So it is. I love that. It's incredible. Oh, letting go. That was your last okay. question. You know, that's a big one. And right now I love it because my granddaughter discovered Frozen and she watches it every day. And she's like, want me to sing Letting Go? And I'm like, sing it. And she'll throw her arms out and spin around. She doesn't even know the full significance, but she knows how good it feels. And that letting go and surrender has been a huge one for me because I grew up needing to control people and things in my life but it didn't come out in a healthy way. It was toxic. And I realized I didn't have control because I was trying to control everyone and everything else instead of what I could control. And I told a client once and she loved it. And I talk about this a lot about it's like doing a trust fall into spirit's lap or into God's lap. There's a letting go of understanding meaning what's your part in manifesting and what's the universe's part. And you have to do your part first, like you did. You were in massive change. You stayed in inspired, aligned action. You're always either moving toward or away from what you want. You took all the actions toward, and you're right. Sometimes they're illogical, inconvenient, uncomfortable, expensive. And then there is the other side of that coin, which is the feminine energy of allowing and receiving and letting go and letting it all come together. And then that's the feedback and then working with it again. And too many of us get it into control and it works against you. So the letting go and surrender, the book I tell people always to read about the mind and about surrender is Untethered Soul. Oh, yeah. Because his second book was the surrender experiment about how he used working with his mind and you are not your mind and then how he created his life. But Untethered Soul really gets into that. The surrender is a huge part of it. And it's a hard part because we go, well, if we're the creator of our life, but there is a letting go and surrender to what's not your part and then doing your part and not controlling other people. That is not, you can't even manifest and intend on behalf of other people. That is not your place. Yeah. And then the self-love and the self-worth, that's huge because- yes. You know, until, until you have that, you know, you're not going to attract the, the healthy relationship. Right. I mean, we can always find, you know, I know that's my journey, part of my journey. I've been on it, but 
a self-love, self-worth. I mean, there's a lot of people walking around with worthiness issues, like women especially. That's a big piece. Yeah, because again, the universe and other people are a mirror. And I learned as a therapist, you teach people how to treat you. And then the energetic principles, how can you value? And if you don't value and love yourself, how can other people? They're just reflecting reflecting whatever they're reflecting look at how can I clean that up in myself and then other people will reflect that and that's a huge journey I know you and I have both been on too the self-love and the self-worth and it makes everything easier again to manifest and the other powerful part is that we're all connected and we're all one so when when we're helping someone else, we're really helping ourselves. And when we're helping yeah. ourselves, we're helping others. So it's very, I've just had a big like aha and a big like where you're, you know how as humans, we can have jealousy, we can have these things. But when you decide that like they're me and I'm you, like and something good happens for somebody else, you're really celebrating. And you're really excited for them. And then it was a huge pivotal point for me. I love you're bringing that up because I had a coach early on tell me because I'm a helper and a healer and a codependent recovering. Right. And she said, if the highest good of all doesn't include you, it's not the highest good. And at that time, my mind was like, wait, what? I thought it was noble to suffer and sacrifice. And right. now when I say it and teach it and hear it, I'm like, of course. But there was a time I didn't realize that. And again, when I'm about the highest good of me, which is what we're really supposed to be about, it ends up benefiting because my family and friends and people in my life and community were not necessarily benefiting when I was controlling and trying to save and rescue everyone else. When I started including the highest good of me, it was the highest good of all has to include me, game changer and life changer. Oh, so, so good. So good. And then I know that you follow Kyle Gray. I love him. I saw him live too at, in the I Can Do It Tampa. And I got to see him outside of there because he's walking by with someone. And I was at Starbucks in downtown Tampa. And I was like, Kyle, and I bought his cards. The first I should have bought more than one deck. But anyway, I never bought any of his cards. I didn't even know he had cards. And I have all of Gabby's cards, right? So I said, I bought your cards and, you know, I love you. I love you. And I mean, I love him. Like, and it's just... There's, I just, he's adorable and I know I'm going to be around him again and perhaps who knows, but that's the flip side of what we were talking about when something negatively charges you pay attention tension when something positively charges you. I've had people like that, like they're speaking my language, they're feeding me, they're pouring into me. I love the words. He has beautiful cards and teachings oh, and the words yeah. and follow those things and get more of them because your soul has a resonance to yeah. that. It, I'm so attracted to him. Like, I, I mean, and I'm not saying that in a sexual or in a, you know, he's a man and I'm, a, I'm just, I'm so attracted to him. He's just I don't know. It lights us up and lights, we, yeah. part and, of us is a match to that. And yeah. that's what you follow. And that's where you find what feeds you. Yeah. So good. He talks to Angel. He said the cutest thing he got on stage and he said, I always get nervous when I come over to the U.S. He goes, because, you know, costumes and they're always like, what are you here for? And he's like, I talk to angels and I'm coming on stage and they're like, oh, really? Okay, cool. Like they liked it. And um, someone who's just totally themselves and is able to say, this is who I am and this is what I do and be fully in it. And so you see his life is blessed as he shows up fully as he is and blesses others. And that's been the evolution of my life and yours. I've watched just since I've met you amazing. and that's what it's about. And that's how it continues. It's so amazing because we all do have when you were talking earlier about the family system it's like we we want to belong we we do that's a need and then when you decide that like I don't have to um belong I can like the the, the most successful people are unique and and they don't fit in you know 
the most successful. So yeah, they do. And they just have to find their way. That's a big part of the spiritual journey is growing up in a family where I didn't always feel like I belonged and then kept placing myself in groups of people where I didn't belong to try to heal that. And then finally realizing not everyone is meant to belong in that way yeah. and really embracing that. This was so amazing. Thank you so much. Tell, tell everybody, um, I know you have a free offering of an email course. I do. I have two resources for you. One is that my first book, A Mindset for Manifesting on Purpose, and I'm sure you'll have the links for them, but you can get the digital copy of that book. This was the original work I had to do to create the business and the life. And that is at michellebar.com forward slash book. And then if you go to intuitivesuccesscoach.com, I have a free 21 day email course. You just give 15 to 20 minutes a day for 21 days, you'll get an email a day and it will take you through the whole process I use of how to move forward in any area of your life so that you can start working with these principles and seeing results and creating. So I've got both of those for you. I have my Loving What's Next podcast, lovingwhatsnextpodcast.com. And I have a lot of training series on there about manifesting as well. So all of those are resources if you want more of this. Absolutely. And then most of my audience is Michigan. So tell them Fox 2 News on Wednesdays at noon Eastern, right? Are you on? Every yes, I'm on Fox 2 News with Marielle Lou on the noon. I have my segment on Wednesdays. So incredible. I love it. You're just helping so many people. It's so powerful, so beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. And we're going to put all your links in the show notes. And yeah, it was just great super fun. Thank you so much, Linda. I always love talking to you about this and following your journey. And so I'm excited for this to come out for you to share this with your community. And I'd love to connect with them. Absolutely. So great. Thank you, Michelle. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.